This is Faith Story, a digital tool that helps you in your personal walk and relationship with the Lord. And thank you for watching. But we're going to look at a topic that it doesn't matter if you've been walking with the Lord for 25 or 50 years, or if you've just started that journey. It's something that all of us battle with because it's part of our human nature. It's part of the flesh that we have to deal with on a daily basis. And that is this all or nothing mindset of when do I feel that I can go to God? When I'm ready and I can give my all, well then that's when I can walk closely with Him. What are the things that hold me back from walking closely with Him and being in the type of relationship that He really wants? So it's going to take a shift in focus and it's going to take us having to challenge some of our good intentions. Because often we will say, but I just, I want to get these things right first. I want to give God my best. He has given so much that I don't deserve. I want to give him what he deserves. And that human thinking is often what creates the barriers. So when we start unpacking those, it's because underneath the good intention, and because it's a good intention, that's often why we allow ourselves to get away with it. But underneath that, well, there's some things that sit there that God doesn't want to remain there. He wants us to go and to look at them and to say, okay, is that his truth? Or is that something that I have come with that has created a barrier and now stands in between us? So the all or nothing mindset is often the thing that holds us back. But you might have also heard another saying, and that is, come as you are. Now, to come as you are is a beautiful picture, especially when you enter into that relationship with God. So it's that picture of God calling you, no matter where you might be in life, no matter what has happened in your past, no matter the state of your heart, he says, just as you are. Don't try and fix yourself before you come to me. Just come as you are. And in that moment, when you come to God and you accept who the Lord Jesus Christ is and what he has done for you, and that's when you start your relationship with God. But we often leave that statement just there for the moment of salvation, not realizing that that is something that God is calling us to on a daily basis. He's saying every single day, well, how are you today? How's it going today? Well, come just as you are. Just come walk with me. Come walk closely with me. He's not saying get all these things right first. So when you come just as you are, there is a reason why God is able to do that. And that's because God has placed relationship at the forefront of his interaction with us. That has happened because the Lord Jesus Christ came, born under the law, born in the law, to fulfill the law. And then when he cried out, it is finished, he was saying, well, that's no longer the focus. So in times past, yes, maybe it was that we could only have a relationship with God in the way that he wanted us to. But now in Christ, that's why God sent his son and he didn't send more commandments. He sent his son, which is incredibly personal, because he wants the relationship. And when we can look at the relationship aspect of it, well, that's when we have to start challenging ourselves and say, well, how much of all the other stuff am I still holding on to and putting before the relationship with God? These three P's get in the way of the relationship, and they are our performance So I say, before I can enjoy the relationship and have fellowship with God, before I can benefit from that, well, I have to go check my performance. I have to make sure that I've done all the things that I feel I should do. And then we somehow substitute that and say, I'm going to go and check to see if I have done all the things that I think God says I should do. And yet those are not the things often that God says you need to do. In fact, There are no things that God says you need to do before you can come to him. So when it's based on your performance, well, that becomes the barrier. 
I can't give my all. I haven't done this. These disciplines, these habits, these rituals, these religious things, these routines. So now I can't come to you. It's not just our performance though. Sometimes it's also our problems. So it's it's the things that we are dealing with, the things that we are ashamed of. It's the things that we know we shouldn't be doing that if I'm doing these things, well then, oh, no, God's going to be upset. He's not going to want to talk to me. He's not going to want me to come to him. And we create a barrier through our own guilt and our own shame. Sometimes it's because of the position that we think we should be in. I'm not that type of person. I'm not the type of person that can walk with God closely because I don't fit this mold. And we create a mold that's built up from our past understanding of who Christians are. It's built up from the expectations of others. And so those three Ps can be summed up by the word religion. Because it's all about us. It's all about what we do. So Christianity places the emphasis on the relationship that God wants with us through Christ. Religion is our attempt to please God. So God says he's done it all in Christ. Religion says, okay, but now what can I do? What can I do to please you? When we can see that difference and we can start asking, well, God is not interested in us doing the things and then coming to him. He is interested in doing the things with us. He wants to be there. He wants to be our strength. He wants to be the one that gives us the victory. He wants to be the one that allows us to grow with him because that's the most important part. So when you say, come as you are, it's important. God says, absolutely, come as you are. But he also says, you're not going to stay like you are because that's the point of being in a relationship with him. It's that we grow in our faith. And we change and our character changes so that over time, walking with God, it's the most powerful way to change. So if we can get to a point where our main focus is not trying to tick boxes, it's not trying to do a whole lot of things, it's just show up. Because that is one of the most important ingredients in any relationship. The closest relationships that you have will have that ingredient. If you can think back, and maybe you still have that person in your life now, which would be a great blessing, to someone that you can just be yourself with. It's the person that no matter how you feel in any moment, you won't mind being in their company. They have seen you at your worst. They've seen your ugly side, your bad side. They've seen every single thing about you that you wouldn't want others to see. But because it's a safe space with them, when you're struggling, that's the person you want to go to. That's the person you want to seek out. Others, you'll be like, no, 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 I, I can't see anybody now. But there's that person that you have. It might be a parent, a sibling, a, a really close friend, a mentor. But it's the person that you can just show up no matter what. And it's unconditional. And you feel that. And you know that when you go to them, you're going to get the help that you need. Even if they don't have all the answers. It's just to be with them. It is that unconditional, safe space. And... In your life, you have a human relationship. And I just want us to expand that a little bit. And just to admit, the most obvious person to go to, the safest, the one who loves us more than any human being ever could, unconditionally, is God. So why is it that if he is the most obvious person to go to when we are struggling, what have we created? What is the barrier that stops us from going to him? There are things that we are holding on to. Things that we, every single time, he should be the person. So why is it that he's not? Now, there might be many, but we want to have a look at just a few. 
What is it that stops me from having God as that person in my life that I walk so closely with that I show up no matter how I'm feeling on any day? One of the things that creates a barrier is our concept of what the church says. It's the rules and the regulations and the boxes that the church says we need to tick. And church is a, is a beautiful place of fellowship and community. And God uses the local church to encourage and to help us on our walk with him. But we need to be careful that our relationship is not through the church instead of through Christ. So that we are not ticking boxes that the church expects us to tick so that we feel that we are close to God. And it might not be done intentionally. It's these unintended things that happen. But it's things that on a personal level, we need to be able to challenge and to say, so where do I place the emphasis? Do I feel close to God when I tick all the church boxes? I go to church every single week. I attend every single meeting. Or am I close to God when he sees me just for who I am every single day? So those, those church boxes and the, the church traditional mindset might not be something that you are currently in. Very often, that's built with our childhood memories. It's built when, when we had almost like an infantile understanding of church. So that our parents would go along. And that's why I say it's not always the church's fault that we have this understanding. It's from society's perspective. It's from an, an incorrect perspective that we might have built up but never challenged. And said, but if I'm going to be a good Christian, do I have to tick all of those boxes that I have created, that the church has created? And those are the ones that we need to be able to challenge. But we also need to challenge our personal guilt. That's the layer that it's outside of the church, it's outside of any organization or what anybody else says. It's the layer that we build. And we say, if I want to be close to God, I think I need to do. And what is that? I need to be disciplined in my quiet time. I need to make sure that I have a godly character, that I'm not shouting at people and being ugly and I'm not doing things I shouldn't do. Those are the, the barriers that we put in. So if I'm not disciplined enough, well, then I don't feel like I can give my all. If, if I don't have energy, I don't feel like, well, today I can go and pray and I can be excited and, and God's going to lift my spirit because I'm there and I'm ready. The personal layer creates its own set of barriers. And with that personal layer comes the sin layer of guilt and shame. And that might not be current. It might not, might not be the things that you are doing right now. It might be things that you are carrying from your past. Things that you say, yeah, God has forgiven me. But you haven't really forgiven yourself. And because you are still holding on to that and you feel guilty and ashamed, it stops you from seeking God in the moments when you should. It stops you from showing up every single day with him no matter what. So those barriers, those excuses, those are all things that we have created ourselves. It's not what God says. And we're going to have a look at these two beautiful passages in the scriptures. It's from the book of Romans, chapter 7 and chapter 8. And it's almost like looking at the diary of, of Paul the Apostle. It's like his journal, divinely inspired by God. He writes these things down about his personal struggle. And this incredible insight that God has given to him about who Christ is and what God has done through the Lord Jesus Christ. And as we look at some of these verses, I, I encourage you to go and read them, read through these two passages. I think Romans chapter 8 is possibly one of the greatest passages in all of Scripture. So if you, if you have your Bible with you, I'd encourage you to open it to Romans chapter 7 or, or open new version or, or open a tab and, and read these verses through me, uh, with me as we go through them. So Romans chapter 7 verse 18 and 19 to start with. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, nothing good dwells. 
For to will is present with me. I have the desire. The intention is there. But how to perform what is good, I do not find. I don't end up doing the things that I say I want to do. For the good that I will to do, I do not do. But the evil that I will not to do, that I practice. And if you can relate to that, that is the human condition. Paul then concludes in verse 24 and he says, O wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? That is the moment where you feel not good enough. That's the moment where you feel, I can't give my all, so I'm going to give nothing. And then he says, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord, because he can deliver me from the body of death. And now he goes into this beautiful analogy of changing the focus from the flesh to the spirit. Because all of the barriers that we have been looking at, all the things that we create, all of the religious things and the expectations are all part of our flesh. It's part of our own expectations. It's the things that we come up with to try and please God. That's the religious part. And he says, but there is an alternative. You don't have to live in the fleshly things where the focus is on you. And in chapter 8 verse 1, he says, There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. And here's the key. Who do not walk according to the flesh. They don't focus on the fleshly things, but they walk according to the Spirit. They focus on spiritual things, on godly things. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. On account of sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. When we look at the things that God has done. He literally says, for those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit, well, they set their, their mind on the things of the Spirit. This aspect of your Christian faith is something that you have to accept and believe. So the Bible is clear. There are no conditions for salvation except to Accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior by faith. That's it. There are no works attached to it. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, Romans 10, verse 9, all those beautiful verses. And when that takes place, God seals you with his Holy Spirit. So if you have confessed the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior and you have accepted him, whether you felt something, you didn't feel something, whether you feel like there was a big moment or no moment, God promises that by faith, you now have his Spirit indwelling you. And now, with that in mind, listen to what he says here. Now, you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. In other words, you need to get this. Now, if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not his. He is not a Christian. So, this is your entire Christian identity that is based on this. If you are a Christian, you have God's Holy Spirit. And if Christ is in you, then the body is dead, the fleshly things, because of sin. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. And listen to this. Verse 17. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, which he does, then he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear in all of the religious and fleshly things. But you have received the spirit of adoption by whom you are made a child of God and by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. Because the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. That part there is one of the most beautiful 
truths about the relationship that God has established with you. How he has emphasized the relationship. Because you're not going to find Abba Father in the Old Testament. You're not going to find that God invites us into this intimate and close relationship where we can literally call out Daddy. Because that's what God is calling us to. And he's saying, you are no longer strangers. You are like my own children. And if ever there was a relationship that is secure, a relationship that allows you to just show up, well, that's the relationship between a loving parent and a child. And on the basis of that and those verses, we get to these incredible verses in Romans chapter 8. Verse 26, likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And that says that even on the days when you feel like you don't know what to say to God, when you feel like I can show up, but what do I do? And sometimes those are the most beautiful prayers you could ever pray. Is when you go to the Lord and you just say, Lord, I'm here, but I don't know what to say. I don't understand what's going on. And God promises that in that moment, that his spirit is going to speak on your behalf. He will intercede with the things that you can't even say in those desperate moments of your life that God promises comfort that is beyond anything that any person could ever give. That is the closeness and the depth of the relationship that he wants to have with you. That you can bring just the little bit that you have. And he says, don't worry. I have done it all. Following on those verses. Verse 28 of Romans chapter 8. Very well known. And we know that all things work together for the good. To those who love God. To those who are called according to his purpose. What then shall we say to these things? If God be for us, well then who can be against us? And who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Because yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing. Now that list is so exhaustive. It literally says everything. Because it is anything that has been created. And that includes your own personal barriers. That includes any church tradition. That includes any religious thing. That includes any sin or guilt or shame that you might have. Nothing shall ever be able to separate you from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. That is the life that God is calling you to. That is the relationship that he wants to have with you. No barriers, no excuses. Just show up. Just come as you are, because he has abolished all. All things that used to stand in our way. He has forgiven all things in Christ. And he has given all things that we need to be able to have the closest relationship that is possible. That is beyond our human understanding. With the creator, with God our Father, through Christ Jesus. Because of his spirit who lives in us. That's the Christian message. That's the life that God is calling you to, which is so unbelievable. And I just want to encourage all of us, let's get rid of the barriers, get rid of the excuses, get rid of the all or nothing mindset that bases everything on our own performance and say, I'm rather going to believe what God says. And I'm going to believe that he says, you can come just as you are. And I'm going to help you so that you don't stay just as you are. 
And you can walk closely with me no matter what. There's no guilt, there's no shame, there's no expectations. Just come and walk with me. That is the life that God is calling you to in Christ. That is the victory. That's why he says you're more than a conqueror. That's why he says all things can work together. If you've only got 20% on a day and you feel like that's all I've got today. Well, when you give that 20% to God, that's 100%. And God says, I'll take that and I'll work with it in ways that you could never even imagine because that's what I do. And even on our worst days, we still serve the greatest God. And I want that to be the change in perspective. So I'm not looking at the things of the flesh. I'm not looking at what I can bring. I'm not looking at my strengths, my abilities, my performance, my position. I'm not looking at my problems. I'm looking at what God has done for me in Christ, which is more than enough because he has given all. And I, I can give nothing. And that will be the greatest part that I can play. When I can say it has nothing to do with me, but it is everything to do with what God is doing in and through me. So may you be encouraged on your walk. And as we continue to push through those barriers, get rid of the excuses and walk closely with the God who is calling you. Come, just as you are. Just show up.